Hey everyone, welcome to the top 10 list. Welcome to my top 10 favorite romance movies of the 2000s. Yes, from 2000 to 2009. Yes, in one of my last top 10 videos, I did my top 10 favorite romance movies of the decade from 2010 to 2018. And this is all going to be leading up to my favorite romance films of all time. I'm going to be doing my favorite romance films from each decade. I'm going to do the 90s, then the 80s, and the classic era, and all that stuff. All my favorite romance films from each decade, and now this time, it's the 2000s. 2000 to 2009. So yeah, let's get to it, shall we? Here's my top 10 favorite romance films of the 2000s, in my opinion. And yes, and as always, before a top 10 list, you gotta have your... Honorable mentions. And my honorable mentions are definitely maybe Forgetting Sarah Marshall. <laughs> Sorry. Forgetting Sarah Marshall. I said that already. Uh, the Holiday, 40 Year Old Virgin, Moulin Rouge, Juno, High Fidelity, Something's Gotta Give, and Garden State. All great films just gonna be in the top 10 list. But didn't mean my top 10 was my number 10. My number 10 is Love Actually. Yes, a Christmas romantic comedy that some people love, some people hate, some people are just indifferent to it. So, yeah, I love this movie. I think it's a great film. I think it's a great Christmas film. It's a romantic comedy that I love. It's not a romantic com it's not a romantic comedy that I despise and I wish it just fucking die and burn already. It's actually a legit great film. It's got great characters, great stories. It's directed by Richard Curtis. I love his work. I love Notting Hill. I love Four Weddings and a Funeral. It has a lot of great actors. Liam Neeson, Bill Nighy, Colin Firth, Hugh Grant, uh, uh, Billy Bob Thornton, uh, Roman, Roman Atkinson, Emma Thompson. A lot of people this film. And... Some stories don't work, some stories are okay, some just don't as work as uh, well as other stories, but I love Liam Neeson's story with him and his uh, stepson. I love, uh, I enjoy Colin, Colin, uh, Colin Firth's story with him and uh, the girl who doesn't speak English and stuff, and I love Bill Nighy's story as the character Bill, the freaking rock star. Best story in the whole fucking movie. It's so great. Alan Rickman's story in Emma Thompson's is okay. Laura Linney's story is just, it's okay. Again, some stories aren't as interesting as other stories. The, the story that's kind of ridiculous is the guy, um, Colin, and he's the British guy that goes to America to hook up with American girls. I think that's the weakest story out of the whole film because it's just, it's kind of absurd and pretty stupid. The, the one story I find pretty funny, it's a short one, is uh, Martin Freeman. He's in uh, one of the stories, and he's doing like a pornography, por porno movie or something. It was pretty funny, and yeah. Again, some stories really work well, and the comedy is really funny, and a lot of the romance, the romances work just fine. Like, I think Hugh Grant and the, the girl, the Prime Minister, falls in love with the Secretary. I thought that was just eh. But I love the, the romance between uh, Colin Firth and... Uh, the girl who doesn't speak English and stuff. That that was a pretty that was kind of sweet and stuff. And yeah, again, some romances they work just fine. Uh, the she was taught Asia Ford and Keira Knightley story was also good with Andrew Lincoln doing the cute cards thing. That's a pretty uh, touching moment and stuff. And it's a good Christmas movie, puts you in the good Christmas spirit and stuff. And I just love this movie. It's a British comedy, and I love British comedies. And it's, it's a good romantic comedy. It's predictable. It's cliche. Not all the stories work, but I love it. Coming in number nine is Knocked Up. Knocked Up is one of my favorite comedic films of all time. And the reason it's not number one is because it's more of a comedy than it is a romance. But it is still a romantic film. It is the romance between Ben and Allison. Because it's about this guy who meets a girl in a club and he basically knocks her up and stuff. And he's a stoner who has like no job and she's like a, a reporter for e-television and stuff. And they're like complete opposites of each other. But... They have to, you know, go through this pregnancy together and stuff, and they actually eventually fall in love with each other. And it's actually a very sweet romance. And Catherine Heigl, who's good in absolutely nothing, I've never seen a single thing I like Catherine Heigl in, she's legit good in this film. This is the only good performance I've actually seen Catherine Heigl give. I, maybe she has more, but I, just, I don't like her as an actress, and this is the only movie I thought she gave a good performance. And I thought she had genuinely great chemistry with Seth Rogen. Seth Rogen's funny as hell. His roommates play by all the great actors. Jason Siegel, Jonah Hill, Jay Baruchel, Martin Starr, 
all fantastic. I love Paul Rudd in this movie. We can watch we can watch Taxi Cab Confessions. <laughs> Looks like your computer has chicken pox. <laughs> Steely Dan, old Steely Dan. Steely Stan gargles my balls. How are things at Butt Fucking Am Palace? Well played, sir. <laughs> Fucking love the, the the lines in this movie. It's a funny movie. It's a great Judd Apatow film. It's my favorite Judd Apatow film. Love uh, Forty Old Virgin, and, and I love Forty Old Virgin, and even Funny People's decent. But this is his best film. It's it's got realism in it. It's got a great humanistic approach in a very different way, and it's a very funny stoner comedy. But it's also a great romantic comedy. So of course I had to make the list. Coming at number eight is Amelie. Amelie is such a beautiful film. This is a great foreign film, great French film, amazing. What's, what's her name? Uh, Andre Tatu, is that her name? I forget her name. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce it properly. I suck at pronouncing names. Expert at fucking people's names up right here. Uh, great movie, though. Great romantic comedy, great dramatic film. I, I think it's a very funny film. Some people find it very boring and dull. They don't find it very funny. I find this movie very funny and very deep and very romantic. It is a very romantic film. It's beautifully shot, wonderfully, wonderfully written, amazingly directed, and everything about this movie I think is fantastic. It is so good. It's so weird that the director of this movie did Alien Resurrection. Very different film. Uh, but I love this film. It's a great film and one of my favorite romance films of the 2000s. Coming in at number seven is a fantasy romance film, and that is Stardust. Stardust, yes, not the app, <laughs> the, the movie Stardust, directed by Matthew Vaughn. Love this movie, probably the most underrated Matthew Vaughn film ever. It is, is so good. That and Layer Cake. Layer Cake's pretty underrated, but Stardust is so good. As Charlie Cox, a daredevil himself, is in this movie. It's with him, it's got Claire Danes, Robert De Niro, Michelle Pfeiffer, Rupert Everett. A lot of big actors in this film, and it's a great movie. Henry Cavill is a small role in the movie. He's really great, and I love this movie. It's a great fantasy adventure, but it's also a romantic story between the main character played by Charlie Cox and the the girl made by the star, the star girl, I call her, Stardust, Claire Danes. It's a romance between the two of them, and they go on this amazing adventure. And he basically he finds his mother and everything. He rules the kingdom. Spoilers at the ending. He has to fight Evil Witch, played by Michelle Pfeiffer. He teams up with a gay pirate, played by De Niro, which is awesome. I love it. It's a beautiful romantic story. It's an amazing, such a fun action fantasy film. I have no idea why not enough people saw this film, but people should. It is so delightful, so freaking cool, so entertaining. Love Stardust. Coming in number six is a tie between two films, both directed by Joe Wright and both star Kira Knightley, and that's Atonement and Pride and Prejudice. Um, Technically, Atonement is a way better film, but Pride and Prejudice I just like better, so I just put them both as a tie. I uh, Yes, I put them in different orders when I did the ranking of Joe Wright films. Yeah, don't have a fucking bitch fit if you call me out on that shit. But again, there's a lot of films I wanted to include on this list. I just put them both as a tie because I, I guess they're both almost in a way a tie because again, Atonement is a better film. I think Atonement is a better told story. It's got the better cinematography. It's more thought provoking. It's more real. It's more raw. I think it's just a way better constructed film, and I think Kieran Nelly gives Kieran Nelly gives a better performance in Atonement than she does in Pride and Prejudice. Pride and Prejudice, however, is based off a novel by Jane Austen, a novel that I have read, and a novel that I love, and the movie is just so much more watchable, entertaining, it's delightful, it's enjoyable, it's just a beautiful period piece romantic story, and I, I just love watching it more than Atonement, because Atonement's too gritty and too fucking depressing to watch. Both equally amazing, both great romantic films. Atonement has got great performances by both Keira Knightley and James McAvoy. Pride and Prejudice has a huge cast, all fantastic. Both directed by the same director who is just an amazing director. Who doesn't love Joe Wright? Love that guy. Unless he's doing Pan. But other than that, he's great. And yeah, both films are amazing and both one of my favorites romance films of the 2000s. Coming in at number five is 500 Days of Summer. Yes, directed by Mark Webb, the guy who gave us the masterpiece, The Amazing Spider-Man 2. <laughs> uh, 500 Days of Summer. Again, this just proves that Mark Webb, when he does something that he's good at, which is mostly comedic, drum dramatic, realistic films, he's good at those. Like, I loved Gifted. Last year's Gifted was really good. Only uh, The only living boy in New York was pretty terrible, but I digress. 
Gifted was good. 500 Days of Summer is his best film. I love this movie. It's a great romantic comedy. Zoe Deschanel is really great. Joseph Gordon-Levitt is fantastic in this film. I love how this movie is directed. I love the point of view uh, perspectives uh, on romance and stuff and what love really is. One of my favorite scenes is, uh, my, one of my favorite scenes of the whole movie is when Joseph Gordon-Levitt gets invited to the wedding party. And basically, it shows two perspectives. It shows what, it shows the realistic perspective, and it shows what he expected when he went to this party. It was basically hope, it was, you know, it was expectation and realism and stuff. It was really cool and stuff. It showed two point of views of what he wanted to happen at the party and what's really happening at the party and stuff. And the way it's put together and stuff, it's brilliant direction and stuff. And very smart. And the soundtrack of this movie is also really good. It's a very sweet romantic film, but it's also very realistic. Again, it's very funny. I think Joseph Gordon-Levitt steals the film, and I just think it's a fantastic film. More people need to watch it, but I know a lot of people love this film, but even more people need to watch it, because it's just brilliant. Coming number four is Lost in Translation. Yes, I know a lot of people, a lot of people will call me out on this, because they're like, wait a minute. This is not a romantic film. This is a dramatic story with comedic elements and romantic elements. Exactly. It has romantic elements in it, and I do think it is a romance film between uh, Bill Murray and Scarlett Johansson and stuff. A lot of people say it's more of a friendship than a romance, and yes, it starts off as a friendship. But I think it ends as a romance, especially when he's like whispering to her and stuff, basically telling her to come find him and stuff, and basically meet him up, up, up and meet up with him and stuff. I think it is a romantic story between the two of them. It starts off as a friendship, but I think it turns out as a romance. And honestly, if it is, it's a very beautiful love story. And I think this is a very beautiful film. I think it's uh, wonderfully shot. This film. I think Bill Murray gives an amazing performance. Same with Scarlett Johansson. Even Anna Faris and Giovanna Ripsi are fantastic in this film. There's great comedic uh, elements to the film, but it's mostly a straight character study between these two characters, who are very lost characters, and I think it's very beautiful, very atmospheric, very atmospheric, very poignant, and it's just such a, it's a nice trip. Because you're here and you're in Japan and you get to explore the amazing scenery. You get to go to amazing parties with these great characters. It's like you're on a very nice trip. And I just, I love this movie. And I do consider it a, a romantic film. It is a dramatic film first, but it's still a romantic love story as well. And yeah, it's one of the best. Coming in number three is Broke Bat Mountain. Yes, Broke Bat Mountain. Everyone knows this one is coming. I've mentioned this a bajillion goddamn times. Of course, it's going to be on this list. Ang Lee, when he directed this movie, was fantastic. Beautiful, beautiful cinematography. Heath Ledger and Jake Gyllenhaal are both amazing in this film. Michelle Williams and Anne Hathaway are both fantastic. It's a great movie about homosexuality. I'm glad it won a lot of Oscars. It should have won fucking Best Picture, not fucking Crash. Love it. I've talked on and on about this movie. Everyone knows I love this film. So yeah, of course it's one of the best. Coming at number two is Before Sunset. Yes, the sequel to Before Sunrise. This is actually, if I had to choose, I consider uh, I consider the Before trilogy as a one big film because it's the life uh, it's the life romance of Jesse and Celine. But if I had to pick a favorite, Sunset would probably be my favorite by a little bit. I love how short and to the point it is. I love this whole movie. It feels like just one big conversation between Jesse and Celine. We haven't seen each other in nine years. She meets him at his book at the end of his book tour, and just learning about them and what they've gone through in the past nine years and stuff. And why didn't they meet each other nine years ago and stuff? And it's interesting learning about their lives and learning about uh, learning about what they do from learning what they do with their jobs and their personal lives and what they love and their interests, their beliefs are so much different in this movie. They're almost, uh, they're the same, but they're different. They're grown, but they're also happy, but damaged. It's just, they're such complex characters, Jesse and Salim. And 
Both Julie Delpy and Ethan Hawke give amazing performances, and Linklater's direction is just stunning. I love movies with just dialogue, and if it's dialogue done right and done realistically and smart, and just, there's a lot of care and passion into it, and this movie's just fantastic. It's a beautiful film, an amazing romance story, and it's one of the greatest love stories I have ever seen put to film. The three of them together make a fantastic film, but this one is still great, and it's probably one of my favorites out of the trilogy. It probably is my favorite. Yeah, it's my favorite. <laughs> and my number one favorite romance movie of the 2000s is Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Yes, this is a comedic film. This is a dramatic film. This is, this is a science fiction film. But it's also a romance film between Joel and Clementine. Oh, my darling, Clementine. Uh, Jim Carrey, amazing. Best performance by Jim Carrey I've ever seen. He is so good in this movie. Kate Winslet is fantastic. Why she never won the Oscar for this film, I have no fucking idea. The chemistry between the two of them is amazing. They're one of my favorite couples in films. They're so good together. I love the story about basically a girl basically wiped her memory of all the memories of her husband. And basically the husband wants to do the, to do the same thing. The whole movie is takes place mostly within his mind and his memories of Clementine and stuff and you learn about the romance and everything and he almost wants to stop it because he doesn't want to get rid of the memories of Clementine. But the funniest thing is, this movie is also about fate and stuff. Even when they lose the memories of each other, they still find their way back to each other because they have that drawnness and that connection with each other. And it's a very beautiful love story. It's also very funny, also very deep and dramatic. And also is very, it's also a very clever and unique and original science fiction film. But in the, at its core, it is a romance story, and it's a very beautiful romance story. It also has a really great supporting cast. Elijah Wood, Tom Wilkinson, Mark Ruffalo, Kirsten Dunst, all fantastic. And the film itself is a masterpiece, and it's one of my favorite films of all time. So yeah, that was my top 10 favorite romance movies of the 2000s from 2008 to 2008. Huh, from 2000 to 2009. So yeah, in the comment section below, please tell me what are your top 10 favorite romance films of the 2000s and your opinion. In your opinion, yeah, I know everyone has different opinions and stuff, but yeah. But yeah, give me your top 10 favorite romance films from 2000 to 2009. Comment below, let me know. And as always, this video, please like, subscribe to this channel, and join the dark side.